now have Baltimore City. It has Marin City Council to govern it. It has a separate revenue court source. Now it has a separate court system. And it's not really part of Baltimore County anymore after all. There's never been a pronouncement to that effect. It's never been designated a separate county. Uh, but it has become a separate unit of government. And that is recognized with a determination that we need to have a new county seat for Baltimore County. Uh, this is going to be an awkward transition in that the courthouse and the jail are both within Baltimore City. And sooner or later we're going to need a new courthouse and jail in Baltimore County and a new county seat. There was a good deal of pushing and shoving to determine where the county seat of Baltimore County was to go. Towson Town, as we know, is the winner. Many of you have probably seen this historic marker. Uh, but after various communities argued that it ought to be in their neck of the woods, Towson Town won the fight. A new courthouse was, construction of a courthouse was begun in, uh, in Baltimore and Towson. The courthouse we, we still see today. The jail was also selected. You can see the remnant of that jail as well from uh, these uh, 19th century structures still exist. <coughs> the, uh, map, uh, Matt may want to save these maps. <laughs> this is in 1888 when We've seen new, well-defined, and almost geometric limits for Baltimore City. Skipped a lot. Baltimore City grew and annexed a number of small territories between 1796 and 1888. Been on the grow all along. But this was a major addition. And this took us out to the North Avenue northern boundary, or the Cold Spring Lane northern. Annexation Act, you may hear some more about, uh, increasing the size of Baltimore City to 81 square miles, and this is the annex, this is the shape of city we, the city we know today. The shape of a city which, for reasons we may hear why, it's very difficult to change. Uh, why we have come to have a peculiar configuration we're all now used to, of the county, the shape of a donut, surrounding a city, which is also a county. And a city which probably would like to expand further out into the suburbs and share some of the taxable wealth that's found there, but it's constrained from doing so because of the peculiarities of history and the peculiarities of the law. Baltimore County, in 1918, is still a County Commissioner County doesn't have home rule. The distinctive thing about county commissioners were they, every time they passed the law, had to get the approval of the Maryland General Assembly. Uh, so they had some local administrative powers, but they were constrained. So there was a movement, a reform movement in the 1950s, to try to change Baltimore County from a commissioner's county to a home rule county. And you could do that by having a popular vote agreeing to a charter government and then to the election of a county executive and a county council. In 1954, voters in Baltimore County approved a charter government. Uh, it was put in place with an election in uh, 1956. Michael Birmingham, who had been a county commissioner, was ex officio and a county executive, and a reform slate of four Republicans out of seven uh, county councilmen, uh, a short
short period of time, took over the Republican governance of all of the town. I don't think it's happened since, but maybe. <laughs> uh, well, that's the story. Uh, you, we finished our history of uh, Baltimore County, Baltimore City, separate but together. Uh, and now here for <coughs> Matt with some more detail. I, I see some questions. I guess we have time, so why don't I handle them? Yes? Uh, there's 1729 map on page uh, 2. Yes. The right hand corner. <coughs> what's the current boundaries of that particular map you showed here? What were the which? What, what's the current uh, street name of that, that location of that original town that is moved the lot? The bound lot. You see Baltimore Street running across the middle. That, let me turn to it. I've done it. You can see in corner, page two. Yeah, the, the, um, Baltimore Street is labeled coming across. And so you have a cross of Baltimore Street horizontal and Calvert Street uh, vertical. And Light Street. It's hard to see with a small map. The, is, I think Light Street is not yet called Light Street, is yes, it? Yes, it is. Okay. Uh, so get a magnifying glass and you can figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. Uh, if you look at the map up at the top where it shows that kind of loop thing, uh, that northernmost lot is Old St. Paul's Episcopal Church. Yeah, that'd be right. So that would be about as far as Saratoga on the north to the harbor and maybe from about where the Civic Center, that's the called Civic Center, over to the Jones Falls yeah. is basically it. The bridge and the causeway you see in the Jonestown uh, is uh, actually where it's uh, A Street. It's Gay Street today. So if you think where Gay Street crosses over uh, the the, uh, the Baldway, it's under the Jones Falls Expressway. Uh, that'll give you a fix there as well. Yes. Oh, um, good question. But it says here in 1888, annexation approved at the polls by a six percent margin. Who got the vote on that? That the city, the county, both the state. Who voted? Matt Cranston can give you an anticipatory, anticipatory yeah. answer. I was going to talk about that. We both did. Uh, most of the annexations, with the exception of 1918 and 1817, uh, uh, were uh, approved both by voters in the city and voters in the area of the area. 